What's up everybody? Hey, let's talk about bulletproofing the shoulder. Let's talk about building resilience at the shoulder joint. A couple different things we need to look at. Number one, we need to look at stability. Uh, the shoulder joint is anatomically designed for high levels of movement and of mobility. It's kind of like a, like a golf ball sitting on a tee. It allows a lot of movement in all three planes. And so because the shoulder is anatomically designed for those higher levels of mobility, we need to make sure that we are stabilizing the shoulder joint appropriately in our training. On the flip side, we, got, we need to look at the shoulder from the mobility perspective. And although the shoulder is designed for higher levels of mobility, oftentimes if we don't train it properly or if we don't consistently utilize the shoulder for exploring higher ranges of motion, we're gonna lose that mobility over time. So if we feel like we've lost some mobility in the shoulder joint over time, there's a lot of different things that we can do to try and bring it back and enhance our levels of shoulder mobility. We know the golf swing requires pretty high degrees of movement at the shoulder joint, specifically when we look at external internal rotation as well as flexion and extension. We need to make sure that that shoulder joint is not only moving properly, but it's also stabilizing properly and it's strong enough to handle the loads and the forces that are created in the golf swing. So with that being said, here's a few ways that we can work both sides of the spectrum, a couple different stability drills that we can utilize, as well as a couple different mobility drills that we can utilize after that. Enjoy. This exercise is called a bear crawl ISO with shoulder taps. To complete it, I'm gonna get into that tabletop bear crawl position. So you'll notice my knees are just barely off the ground and my back is relatively flat. From there, I'm going to simply start by lifting one of my hands and touching my opposite shoulder. So my left hand will touch my right shoulder, my right hand will touch my left shoulder, and I just alternate back and forth. A few big things is notice how stable I stay. My hips aren't shifting as I raise and alternate hands touching, touching my shoulders. My back stays relatively flat the entire time. My knees aren't raising or lowering. They're staying pretty much in that static position. My head is staying statically right where it's at as well. I'm really trying to stabilize that spine, stabilize that core, hips, ankles, kind of everything is stable except our arms and our hands that are just flipping back and forth, touching our shoulders, placing some anti-rotational stresses on, on our body. This exercise is called an extended side plank row. To complete it, I get into a side plank position. However, instead of being on my forearm, I'm gonna be on my hand in that extended position. That's gonna force higher stabilizing stressors to be absorbed by that shoulder, truly stabilizing the rest of my body as well as that rowing movement that I'm completing. Once I'm in that stable side plank position, I wanna grab the band or cable that's hooked in front of me at about knee height and begin that rowing pattern. I wanna be sure that I'm moving through a full range of motion, so truly achieving levels of scapular retraction or pulling that scapula together, pinning my shoulder blades together, as well as letting that scap uh, move apart as I extend my arm and let the band pull me outward. I'm working levels of core stability, anti-rotation, anti-lateral flexion, shoulder stability, posterior lat, and other muscul muscle strength. This exercise is called a quadruped shoulder car or controlled articular rotation. The goal of it is to take our shoulder through a complete range of motion and focus external and internal rotation. So we're gonna get onto our hands and knees. We're gonna raise one arm in front of us as high as we can, palm side up. Now I'm gonna slowly start leading with my thumb, working it clockwise. Once I get to a 90 degree position, I rotate so my palm is still up, I still lead with my thumb, but now my shoulder is in an internal rotation, internally rotated position. I get all the way to my tailbone, rest, and now I lead with my pinky coming back, palm up. Internally rotated at 90, I twist to now be externally rotated, palm up, lead with my pinky still. As you get comfortable, we wanna really stress and try and challenge this range of motion. We wanna lift that shoulder as high as we can, trying to challenge our shoulder's rotation abilities and expand them. 
This exercise is called standing shoulder rotations. To complete it, I'm gonna place my arms into those two 90 degree positions. So if I'm placing my right shoulder into external rotation with kind of an upwards 90 degree angle, my left arm will be in a downwards 90 degree angle or internal rotation. And then from there, I'm just gonna alternate, flipping back and forth, moving in and out of external rotation. With this exercise, be sure to try to keep that upper arm as stable as possible. So notice my upper arm or my bicep basically makes a 90 degree angle with my shoulder. And it, that's gonna maintain throughout the entirety of this movement as I work in and out of external rotation. Feel free to be fairly ballistic with this movement, meaning that you can work into those levels of rotation fairly aggressively, throwing those hands back and forth in and out of rotation uh, to really try and expand those, those ranges of rotation that your shoulder can achieve.